Hello and welcome to the photography and videography channel. I'm Nigel Cooper and today I'm going to be demonstrating doing a fashion shoot using a standard three point lighting setup with the addition of a background light which is a projection lens. Now this kind of lighting setup would be typical for fashion shoots or photographers doing catalogue shoots for wedding dresses or evening gowns, cocktail dresses, that kind of thing where the emphasis is on the dress but you've still got to make the model look good. So I'm just gonna walk through the lights and explain what I've got here and how they're set up. So I've got a key light, a fill light, a backlight and a background light. They're all 500 watt mono blocks. They're Bowen's GM 500Rs, but Bowen's don't actually make these anymore. So whether you're using Godox or Profoto or anything else, it doesn't matter. The technique is gonna be the same. So over here, I've got a key light, which is gonna be giving the main light onto Danny, who's been kind enough to come in today to help model some dresses. It's a double diffused softbox, which is 60 by 80 centimetres. Now, when I say double diffused, about halfway down, it has a layer of diffusion. So when the flash fires, it's going to hit that and scatter the light inside the softbox. So by the time it hits this front baffle, it's going to be nice and even, and there's not going to be any hot spot in the middle or dark areas at the edges. Next, we've got the fill light, which is um, another Bowen's 60 by 80 centimetre softbox. Again, double diffused. Now in terms of ratios, I took a light meter reading off this side of Danny's face and I was getting a reading there of f8 and I've actually got the power ratio of this set to two stops less just to maintain some modelling. I'm shooting today on a Nikon Z7, I've got the shutter speed set to 1 60th of a second. Um, next we've got the background projection lens which is actually sending a gobo image of this city backdrop and that's going to be projected onto the background behind Danny. And um, finally, over here at the back, I've got the hair light, the rim light, which is on a seven inch reflector dish with a 50 degree honeycomb grid. And that's just sending a pool of light down onto the back of Danny's head and shoulders, which is gonna help give separation between the model and the background. Because as photographers, it's our job to try and create the illusion of three dimensionality. Because when you look at a picture, be it on a piece of paper or a screen, it's actually two dimensional. So you've got to create the illusion of three dimensionality by shaping lights. So let's take a few shots and see how they come out. Are we ready? Okay, here we go. Right, okay, so straight to camera, chin down a little. Okay, and just bring your right shoulder around a bit. And that's it, and just relax your arms and kind of there you go. And maybe pop your hip out. There we go. <laughs> okay, here we are. You ready? That looks good. That's great. And then just looking up to the top of one of the lights, that one, that would be great. Yeah, hold that. And then looking the other way, up to the top of that light. Here we go. Hold that. So as you can see here, the key light is doing a really good job of illuminating Danny down the right hand side of her face and body. The fill light is doing a good job of filling in the shadows that are created by the key. And as you can see, the hair light is working well, doing a good job of lighting the hair from behind. And the background projection is adding interest to an otherwise plain colorama background. Now I decided to actually shoot at F8 for this, so I dictated the f-stop in the camera and then I basically took a light meter reading off the right hand side of Danny's face until I got the power output of that to give me a reading of F8. So I was one that dictated that F-stop, which is something I typically do, and then I set the lights around that. The reason I decided to shoot at F8, I know a lot of photographers might have gone for F2.8 or even more open than that when shooting portraiture like this, but I was shooting at the 70mm end of a zoom lens, and I feared if I was too open, the eyes would be in focus, but the ears and the hair around the ears and the front parts of the dress might not be tack sharp. So I decided to shoot at f8 to assure myself that everything would be in focus from the front of the dress to the back and all of Danny's head and shoulders, etc. So I basically set the key light to f8. I set the fill light to f4, which is two stops different, and the hair light at the back when I took a meter reading off the back of Danny's head, pointing a meter towards that back hair light, I decided to set that at f16 because I wanted it to be two stops brighter than the key light so that it would really set that hair off from behind. 
and then the projection light on the back, I took a reading off the background to get F8 for that one. And for those interested, the Colorama background papers are 11 meters long and they're available in either 2.18 or 2.75 meters wide. The one I was using here is 2.18 meters wide. And the reason I go for that size is because the 2.75 meter doesn't stand up in a lot of modern UK homes because the ceilings aren't quite tall enough. So you have to store them lying down, which is not a good idea because they can warp over time. So that's the reason I went for the 2.18. Um, also, they fit in cars a lot easier and they're just more manageable. Um, they cost about £60 each. One final one, straight to camera, nice and strong, you're in charge. Chin down a little. Here we go. Super. Right, you might have noticed there that I told Danny to put a chin down a little bit and that's basically to make the eyes bigger. Because if you have your chin up, your top eyelids will naturally come down and the eyes will become small. But by putting the chin down, it forces the eyelids to come up and it makes the eyes look bigger, which is always better in a portrait like this. Um, finally, if you can just pull your dress up a little bit, just so we can see what you're standing on. A bit more, all the way up, so we go, there we go. There's this little platform that Dan is standing on. And uh, this is a common thing that fashion photographers do for a couple of reasons. You don't really want a model standing on your background paper with stilettos or high heels, because it can create a tear or a rip. And after a shoot, if you've got to basically slice off two or three meters and throw it away, these background papers are only 11 meters long, so they're only gonna last two shoots. So um, that's one reason for it. But more importantly, by having that, it's about five and a half inches. So Dan is five foot five, and by having a stand on that, it's gonna make her closer to about six foot. It's gonna make her legs look nice and long, which is what you want. It's gonna look elegant and graceful. So that's just another tip there for um, fashion photographers doing this kind of shoot.